Welcome, my name is Mark Davis, and I'm the president and co-founder of the Unicode Consortium. Today, I'm gonna to take you a little bit through the history of the consortium and where it is now and where it's going in the future. Before Unicode, there were hundreds of different character encodings for text, which made an unholy mess. The problem was that characters are represented in a computer by one or more bytes. And if you have the same byte that represents two different characters, then when you get a message, it can be completely garbled. Here, for example, is a case where we have one byte, B9, and that byte can be represented by literally dozens of different uh, characters on the screen. So before Unicode, when you got a message, it was pretty likely that you would get something that you couldn't understand. Conversely, the same character could actually be represented by very different bytes. So we here we have a character that can be represented by dozens of different byte sequences. Once Unicode came along, the situation changed radically. Unicode has uh, now 149,000 characters from uh, over 160 scripts uh, covering all of the modern use scripts used in the world, many uh, scholarly scripts, and a number of <clears throat> emerging scripts. It also has math symbols. Now, this isn't an official chart, as you'll see by the names, but it gives an indication of the kind of very interesting math symbols that Unicode has. There are some complications when you try to cover all of the world's writing systems. Let's take, for example, the following characters. The first characters are Arabic, and the last two are numbers. But when the user sees these on the screen, the Arabic characters all merge together, much like cursive uh, English writing. And they go in direction from right to left, while the numbers, just as in English, go from left to right. And there are a host of complications like this in the various scripts of the world. So this is a screenshot of a web page, search page. And notice that all of the characters on it are stored and presented in Unicode. But more than that, there are a lot of pieces that are in order to make this work that depend upon not only the Unicode character encoding, but also language specific data. So if we look at number three, four, five, six, and so on, these are cases where we are taking numbers and converting them into a format that's appropriate for German. The same with a unit, like a certain number of seconds or a certain number of meters. And notice with meters, we are also looking at the preferences for the particular locale and the particular type of measurement, which is person height, and figuring out that it's meters instead of feet and inches. And then there are formats for dates and for relative time formatting, like two days ago and so forth. All of this is presented in CLDR, and you can see a presentation that focuses uh, completely on this. The third big project in Unicode is ICU. And ICU is a set of code libraries uh, that are uh, high quality, full featured. They expose the capabilities that are in the Unicode standard, the characters, the properties, and the behavior or algorithms, and also the CLDR data. So they build on both of these. ICU is available in C, C, and Java, and very soon will be available in Rust. 
and can be accessed from other programming languages uh, with ICU for C and J with uh, three third party shims. And with ICU for X, there's an easy mechanism for generating shims, essentially, and for transpiling. So let's review the Unicode stack. At the very bottom is the Unicode encoding. This has characters, properties, and their behavior. And the properties and behavior go to determining how the characters work together. CLDR provides language dependent data, and this is structured data that can be uh, read by machines and utilized by various programs. And then ICU uh, provides code that implements what's in CLDR and in the Unicode encoding. The CLDR and IC and uh, Unicode encoding are used by a wide variety of programming languages directly. In addition, uh, I, through ICU, many operating systems provide services uh, for internationalization, or they access a CLDR, CLDR or Unicode encoding directly. And of course, the applications on top of those operating systems, when they call through for various internationalization services, get those from either ICU or via directly via CLDR or the Unicode encoding and a whole host of different kinds of programs uh, depend upon uh, ICU as well. So let's talk a little bit about history. Uh, we won't spend a lot of time about all the events between uh, 3,400 BC and 1963. But in 1963, we had ASCII, and that was the first really successful uh, encoding of text uh, using bytes. ASCII alone was insufficient because it could only cover really English and a very small number of other languages. So over time, about 250 different encodings were developed for different languages, plus different companies had versions for different languages and different countries had multiple uh, encodings. So it was all, as I said, a, a big mess. In 1987, people from Xerox came up with the idea of putting all of these encodings together into one uniform encoding where each character had a single representation. They approached me, I was working at Apple at the time, and we started up an organization that was to produce this uniform encoding. After a lot of hard work in 1991, uh, we incorporated this Unicode and we produced the very first version of the Unicode standard. In 1995, we added the properties. In 1997, we modified the architecture. In the original architecture, you could only have up to 65,000 possible characters. It became clear that the scope of Unicode had expanded beyond what we had originally intended, and we needed to have a much larger character set, so it was expanded to uh, over a million possible characters. In 1999, the ICU code, which had been developed by IBM, was open sourced. Then in 2003, the CLDR data was split off from ICU and incorporated as one of the big projects within uh, the Unicode Consortium. At that time, it had approximately 35,000 fields of data for different languages. Then in 2015, we started the Adopt a Character program, which allowed people to donate funds for Unicode. These funds are dedicated to helping digitally disadvantaged languages. 
Then in 2016, ICU finally joins Unicode as one of the three main uh, projects. So as of 2022, the Unicode encoding has reached version 15. It covers thousands of languages. It has 149,000 characters, covers 161 scripts. It has hundreds of properties. And this doesn't even account for the properties used for the Chinese, Japanese, and Korean characters. And it has over 30,000 unique property values for characters. So for CLDR, we've reached version 42. CLDR, both CLDR and ICU release on a six month schedule instead of a yearly schedule like the Unicode encoding. CLDR 42 has over a million different fields. It has uh, 95 locales at modern coverage, six locales at moderate coverage, and 29 locales at basic coverage. You can learn more about CLDR in the associated presentation for CLDR that focuses on it. ICU has reached version 72 for C, C++, and Java. And ICU for X is just about to release as I record this. And it handles Rust and other languages. You can learn about each of these in separate video presentations. So let's go a little bit more into the structure of the Unicode Consortium. The UTC was the original committee, uh, the sole committee in the Unicode Consortium at the beginning. And it is, has a number of different subcommittees. There's one that focuses on scripts other than CJK and Unihon. You can learn more about this committee in the other video presentation. There's a committee devoted to CJK and Unihon, which are Chinese, Japanese, and Korean characters, uh, ideographs. Then there's a subcommittee devoted to emoji, a subcommittee devoted to properties and algorithms, and there's one for the editorial work associated with the standard and associated web pages. And we also have some working groups. There's a working group that is focusing on avoiding uh, source code spoofing, and that is a working group associated with the properties and algorithms group. CLDR is the second large project, and it has subgroups for message formatting, for keyboards, especially for digitally disadvantaged languages, and for formatting person names. And ICU has one main subcommittee, the ICU for X subcommittee. So let's talk about ongoing projects. Uh, these are things that happen in every release. We get additional characters and scripts in the Unicode encoding. We get additional properties and algorithms in the Unicode encoding and in the what's called the Unicode Character Database, plus the associated standards for things like uh, line break, segmentation, and so forth. CLDR adds additional languages and increases the coverage in languages in each release. And then ICU and ICU4X are improving functionality, code size, modularity, performance, and so forth. In the near future, there are a number of projects happening. I mentioned keyboards. There's work for keyboards to Formatting person names is a big new project, and it has a tech preview due out in the middle of October 2022. We have also enhanced message formats in ICU, also in a tech preview in the middle of October. We're enhancing the measurement units all the time, including additional units and additional unit preferences for different locales. And then there's a 
general project to improve grammatical ag agreement for dates, times, units, and so forth, so that they fit in properly in the sentences where they're substituted. There are other projects that I won't list right here, but in general, what we're focused on are projects for interoperable internationalization data and software that improve the lives of people around the world. Thank you for your attention, and I hope this has been useful.